the objective of this video is to find the area of a regular hexagon. Okay, so let me draw a hexagon. Say this is my hexagon. Okay, and uh, let's say that the length as it's regular, so let us say this is say 5 centimeters. Okay, so each side is of 5 centimeters. So the question is how would you find the area of this hexagon? <coughs> okay, so before finding the area, let's see what's the measure of each interior angle. So to explain that, uh, let me draw a line. Okay, so this is an exterior angle. Okay, so here, say, let us say this is say x. Okay. So if this is x, uh, this would be 180 minus x. Okay, so let me write 5 somewhere else. So this is a 5 centimeters. So if you watched uh, one of my other videos, uh, I have proved that the sum of exterior angles of any polygon is uh, always 360. So let me write that. Okay. Sum, this is a very important rule, sum or addition of exterior angles, exterior angles of any polygon, of any polygon. That means of any number of sides any polygon is always 360. This is a very important rule. If you take any polygon, a hexagon, a pentagon, or a octagon, if you add the exterior angles, it will always be 360. So if this is x and say let us this is y, you have got how many exterior angles? So I'll draw one more exterior angle. So this is one exterior angle. This is the other exterior angle. Okay. So if this is y, you can understand this will also be y. This is again x. So what can we say about x plus y? We can say x plus y is 360. And you've got how many exterior angles? So based on this rule, can I say the sum of exterior angles is 360? So can I say 6y is equal to, oh sorry, I made a mistake, x plus y should be? What is x plus y? The sum of the angles on a straight line. So angle on a straight line adds to 180. Okay. So yeah, uh, this is always good to check. So you've got six exterior angles and you add them, they will always be equal to 360. So I can say y is equal to, when you divide both sides by 6, that is 60 degree. So I can say this is 60 degree. So how much would this be? Okay, x plus y is 180, so this has to be 120. Okay, is that clear? So each of the exterior angle is is uh, each of the exterior angle is 90, 60, sorry, and the interior angle is 120. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this. I want to say this is. Let me say this is the best judgment. Suppose this is the, you can say the center of the, not the center, but a point which is equidistant from all the vertices. Okay. So, and if I draw a, a triangle here, so let me draw a triangle here. So, this is what I want to draw. So, can you understand that this hexagon can be split into uh, how many so let me draw that. So let me show you. So this is one triangle. This is the other triangle. Okay, it's very difficult to draw. So I hope you understand the idea. Okay, so this is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth and the sixth. So we've got six equal triangles. Okay, so we want to see what type of triangle is this. Okay, so can you understand the angles at a circle, angles at a point adds to? 360. So we can say each of this angle 
are equal. I'm going very slowly so that you understand. Each of this angle are, suppose let us now say that all the angles, say if this is say Z, this will also be Z, this will also be Z. So can I say 6Z is equal to 360? So how much is Z? So Z I can say is 60 degree. So each of this angle, so let me remove the Z now. So each of this angle is how many degrees? Is 60 degrees. So this is 60 degree. And this, these two angles, the, this, this angle plus this angle is 120 degree. They are, yeah, they are, okay, now I'll explain that in a different way, okay. Now, how can I do this? I want to find this angle and this angle, okay. So we know that these two sides, these two sides are equal. These two sides are equal. So we can say that, uh, well, if this is A, this has also to be A because they are the base angle. Now we can say they seem to be isosceles triangle, okay? So because the, the, this, the distance from year to year is equal to the distance from year to year, okay? So I can say that A plus A plus 60 is equal to 180. Does it make sense? The three angles of the triangle adds to 180. So 2A is equal to 120. So A is equal to 60. So basically, this has become, so if A is 60, this has become an equilateral triangle. Okay, so this is 60, this is 60, and this is 60. So now we are interested to find the area of one triangle and find the area of one triangle. And if I multiply that with 6 or by 6, I get the area of the hexagon. That's my idea. That's what is going to happen now. So we want to find the area of this triangle, equilateral triangle. So we already know, let me change color, we already know this is 5 centimeters. So as all the angles are equal, as all the angles are equal, the sides are also equal. Does it make sense? So if this is phi, I can say this is also phi, and this is also phi. So let me draw an equilateral triangle just to clear the mess. So this seems to be an equilateral triangle. So let us, so this is an equilateral triangle, okay? So this, imagine this triangle I have taken out. So this is the triangle. So we are talking about this triangle where all the sides are so this is 5 centimeters, this is 5 centimeters, and this is also 5 centimeters, and all the angles are equal. Equiangular triangle are equilateral triangle. Okay, if all the sides are equal, all the angles have to be equal. Okay, so I want to find the area of this triangle. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drop a perpendicular from year to year. So we have got this is a right angle, okay, and this and this are equal. So you can see if this is phi, this is uh, this would be 2.5, and this would be. Oh, you don't need that. Okay, you don't need that. Okay, so yeah, we know this angle. This angle is 60. This is 90, so this has to be 30. Okay, we also don't need that. Okay, so we only know this information. Okay, this is of course 30. So I want to find the, to find the area of a triangle, I need the base, which is already, this is the base, which is 5 centimeters. I want to find the height. So this is my H, which is the height. So I'm going to use so Katoa. So yeah, this is for this angle, this is the, opposite and this is the hypotenuse. So I'll draw the so triangle. So this is my so triangle. So okay. So so is opposite is the sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite 
in this case the opposite that we have is O is S times H okay now O is opposite so O in this case is H and S stands for the sine of the angle S stands for sine sine is 60 times hypotenuse which is 5 okay so the hypotenuse now sine 60 uh, without the calculator you can watch my other videos where where I have explained why sine 60 is root 3 over 2 times 5 okay so H is 5 root 3 over 2 now just to explain how I know uh, or just to check whether uh, this answer sine 60 is root 3 over 2 I'll show this on a calculator okay so let me move this this is my ca graphic calculator so I'll go to run and then I'll change my setting to degrees because my calculator works in on radians by default so this is my degree and then I'll show you sine 60 on a calculator is this crazy number which is nothing but root 3 divided by 2 this and this are the same okay just two but uh, this is more exact than this this is called the third form okay I'm not going to much detail so yeah so the area of the triangle so I can say area of triangle is 0.5 or half times base times height which is uh, you can say this is half times your base is phi times phi root 3 over 2 so this is 25 root 3 over 4 okay so this is phi over 1 this is phi over 1 so I multiply the numerators which is 5 times 5 is 25 root 3 over 2 times 2 is 4 so area of one triangle is 25 root 3 over 4 okay therefore area of the hexagon area of hexagon hexagon you've got six triangles of this type so you go six times 6 over 1 times 25 root 3 over 4 okay so you can simplify what goes you can simplify 6 and 4 so uh, 2 goes in 6 3 times and 2 goes in 2 2 times so this is simplified to 25 times 3 is 75 root 3 over 2 so if you want to write this uh, this is as a decimal this is uh, 75 times root 3 equal equal and then divide by 2 am I doing something wrong here mm, just to confirm I think I'm doing something wrong I'm not sure so let me check root 3 over 2 yeah hypotenuse is pi yeah there's nothing wrong here so an area of a triangle is base times base is phi 25 root 3 over 4 that's right and you've got six triangles so multiplying by six so 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4 25 times 3 is 75 okay I think I'm right so this is uh, divided by 2 is 64.95 into uh, 95 centimeters squared okay that is 64.95 so this is 64.95 centimeter squared in 2 dp see you in the next video let's find area of this kite okay so what are the measurements that we have the distance from this point this point to this point is 15 centimeters the distance the whole distance vertical distance is 20 the horizontal distance is 15 so you can div uh, split this into four triangles or also split this into two triangles okay so 
let's split this into two triangles. So this is, I'm consider this this triangle. So let me draw a dotted line so that you see what I'm doing. So I want to find the area of this triangle. I want to find the area of this dotted triangle. So what's the base of that triangle? What's the base of that triangle? Well, the base is 20. If you look at the base, the base is 20. And what's the height? This height, the distance, the horizontal distance is 19, so this has to be 9. Okay, so let me write area of area of of each triangle, the red and the blue triangle. So red plus B, R plus B would be half base times height or base times height divided by 2. So your base is 20. I like to write the formula like this. Base times height. Your height is 9 divided by 2. Basically you have only one formula that is area of a triangle, uh, rectangle. Area of a rectangle is base times height. A triangle is half the area of a rectangle. Okay, you don't need a separate formula for area of triangle. Area of triangle I remember like this, that is area of a rectangle times height. So this is base times height divided by 2, which is, this is 180 divided by 2. 180 divided by 2, which is 90 centimeters squared. 90 centimeter squared. Now, what is the area of the, use your common sense, what will be the area of this green plus the yellow triangle? That would be the same because you've got the same base and same height. So that will also be 90 centimeter squared. So the area of the kite, area of kite would be 90 plus 90, which is 180 centimeter squared. Now you can also divide this into four triangles and add them. You'll get the same answer. Okay, so I want you to do this example yourself. The horizontal distance is 4.8. The vertical distance is 5.4. Basically, you don't need this. Okay, if you know this and this, you can find the area of the kite. Area of a sector. So what is a sector? A sector is a part of a circle enclosed by a radius or radii and an arc. So this is an arc. So this is an arc. And these are the two radii. Okay, so this is radius. This is also radius. And this is arc. So the area enclosed between two radii and an arc is called a sector. So this area is called a sector. So there's a neat formula for area of a sector. So if this is the angle that the sector makes at the center, so this is called the angle at the center, which is a theta. So the area of a sector is area of a sector. This formula may be given in your formula sheet, but it's a very neat formula to understand. Would be theta divided by 360 times the area of the circle, which is pi times radius squared. This is the area of circle, and this is theta divided by 360. Now, this is a fraction which tells you this is how much of the circle. So, this is a fraction. Okay, so let me explain this formula in, it in an easy way. Okay, suppose this is a, this is angle and the angle at the center is right angle. So the theta here is 90 degree. The theta is 90 degree. Now this is the radius, or these are the radii. So use your common sense. What's the area of this sector, this part? Well, without any formula, you can say you that is a quarter of a circle. So area of this sector would be a quarter of pi r squared or area of the circle. Now think about this. A quarter is same as writing 90, which is theta divided by 360. 90 divided by 360 is a quarter. 
Okay, now if someone is asking, what's the, suppose this is a circle with center, this is a center, what's this, this is also a sector. Okay, now this sector has a special name, this is called a semi-circle. This is a semi-circle. Now what is the area of a semi-circle? So the area of a semi-circle, well, is half the area of the circle, which is half times the area of circle, which is pi r squared. Now what is this angle that is formed at the center? This angle is how many degrees? This theta is, well, this is 180 degree. So this half can also be written as 180 divided by 360. So basically 360 is a full turn. So if you go 180 divided by 360, that's half, and that's half of the area of the circle. And that's what this formula is telling you. This is, this gives you the fraction of the circle which the sector is. Okay, so this is theta divided by 360 gives you what is this sector as a fraction of the circle. So let us make up an example. So here, this angle, say let's say this angle is say 70 degrees and the radius is say 10 centimeters. The radius is 10 centimeters and we want to find the area of this sector. So well, the area of this sector, A for area, would be formula is theta, that is 70 divided by 360 times pi times radius squared, which is 10 squared. So you're doing this on a calculator, this is 70 times pi times 10 squared divided by 360. You can do this on a calculator directly. So let's go 70 times uh, pi times 10 times, so let me do it, times 10 squared. Uh, let me delete this, time divided by 360. 70 times pi times 10 squared divided by 360 which is 61.09. I'm rounding this to two decimal places. I'm looking at the third decimal place, which is 6. So I have to increase this by 1. So 61.09. What should be the unit? 61.09. If you write 61.09, this is wrong. Okay, because th this doesn't make any sense because you haven't written the unit. You're writing area and here the length is centimeter, so the unit would be centimeter squared. If you don't write this, this is wrong.
calculate the shaded area of each diagram. All measurements are in centimeters. So let's look at the first shape. So this is given to be 12 centimeters. This is 5 centimeter. This is 10 centimeter. And this is 4 centimeter. You can do this in two different ways, but I'm going to do it in only one way. So I'm going to split this into two rectangles. Okay, so this is, I'm going to split, draw a line here. And I want to find this area, the area of this rectangle and the area of this rectangle. Okay, so what can we do? So for find the area of a rectangle, you need base times height. So for the top, we know this is your base and this is your height. So it is very easy. So the area of the top, you can say area of, the top area would be 12 centimeters times 5 centimeters. It's a good practice to write the unit along with the measurement, so which is 60 centimeter squared. Okay, now we know the basis. Now we know this basis, how much? This base is 4. We need to find this height. Can we find this height? Well, this is 5. This length is 5. And the length from year to year is 10. So can we use this to, to find this? Well, that's easy. So that's 5 centimeters. So the area of this shape or this rect lower rectangle would be 5 centimeters times 4 centimeters or 4 centimeters times 5 centimeters, which is 20 centimeters squared. So you can say the total area is this plus this, which is 80 centimeters squared. Okay, so the next question, we want to find this shaded area. So let me write, say, make this into, split this into two rectangles. So this is the outside rectangle ABCD, and this is the inside rectangle PQRS. So how can you find the shaded area if you know the area of the outside rectangle and the area of the inside rectangle is something that you need to do think yourself so let's find the area of the outside rectangle well that would be abc that's the area of abcd okay so we know this is base of 18 centimeters and you got a height of 13 centimeter so this is 18 centimeter times 13 centimeters so use a calculator so 18 times 13 is how much? 234 centimeters squared. Okay, so and now how do you find the area of the inside? That is PQRS. Imagine this is a piece of wood which has been, you got a hole inside the middle. So what's this length? What's the base or this length? Well, we know from year to year is 18, and we know this length is 4, and this length is 5. So can we use these 3, 4 information to write what's this length? Well, that is 18 minus 9, because 4 plus 5 is 9, so this is 9 centimeters. Now what's this length, which is the height? We know B to C is 13. We know this is 3 centimeters, and this is 2 centimeters. So 13 take away 3 is 10, take 10 take away 2 is 8 centimeters. So the area of PQRS would be 8 times 9, which is 72 centimeters squared. So the shaded area, you have to do something with these two numbers. The shaded area would be the area of ABCD take away, so I'll write like this, so ABCD, that means area of ABCD minus area of PQRS will give you the shaded area, which is 234 minus 72. So let's again use a calculator, 234 minus 72 equal 162 centimeters squared. Okay, the next question. Now this is a semicircle. 
this is a semicircle and this is a triangle so this is a triangle so this is triangle area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2 and this is a semicircle semicircle so what's the base so let's start with the triangle so this is the base for the triangle and this is the height this is the height so area so area of area of triangle so area of triangle is base times height which is uh, yeah this is the bit you can also consider this the base and this the height doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter what is the base I can consider this the base and this as the height okay so yeah I should have considered this the base and this the height doesn't matter because it is base times height divided by 2 so 12 times 14 divided by 2 so let's use a calculator so 12 times 14 divided by 2 which is 84 centimeters squared now this becomes for the semicircle for the semicircle this becomes what your 12 becomes the diameter 12 is the diameter of the semicircle this is the diameter so that 12 the diameter is 12 centimeters so your radius would be half the diameter which is six centimeter and so the area of the semicircle would be area of circle which is pi times r squared divided by two because you're finding half the area of the circle which is pi times six squared divided by two and uh, so this is how you do shift pi times 6 squared divided by 2 which is 56.5 centimeter which is 56.5 centimeter squared so I can say that the total area total area would be 84 plus 56.5 so let me use calculator 56.5 plus 84 which is 140.5 centimeters squared okay and the next question I think this is the last question this is a very complicated shape you can split this into two trapeziums but then you will have a problem with the trapezium so I'm going to draw drop this down so let us drop this down and see what happens so if you can find if you can find the area of this triangle now from the, this has become a rectangle so let me write some letters so this is a b c d this is a b c d which is a rectangle this is the base which is six and this is the height so ABCD is the rectangle is base times height which is 12 times 6 which is 72 centimeters squared okay now we want to find this the area of this triangle this so let me write some letters so that say let me call this say D and this is say F now what's the height what's what's the height and what's the base so for this is the base can we find this base the height of this or the length of this base well we know this is 4 and the whole thing is this from A to D is 12 so this from D to C would be 8 centimeters okay we know this is how much this is 6 and this is 3 so this would be how much this would also be 3 so we can say area of DCF that is a triangle would be base times height divided by 2 which is 8 times 3 divided by 2 
which is 24 divided by 2, which is 12 centimeters squared. So from A, B, C, D, so the shaded area, I'll say only shaded area, so let me write shaded area would be A, B, C, D, the area of A, B, C, D, which is a rectangle minus D, C, F, which is area of a triangle, which is 72 centimeter squared minus 12 centimeter squared, which is 60 centimeter squared. Okay, continuing from uh, this examination series of foundation tire, London examination IGCSC. This question is on speed. A tunnel is 38.5 meters long. A train travels the 38.5 kilometers in 21 minutes. Work out the average speed of the train. Give your answer in kilometers per hour. So this is kilometers, this is in minutes, but the question is you want to change this into kilometers per hour. So first you need to change the minutes into hours. So 21 minutes, one minute has 60, one hour has 60 minutes, so to change this into hours, this is 21 out of 60 hour. Okay, so I'll use a calculator. So this is 21 divided by, sorry, 21 divided by 60. That is 0 0.35 R. So this is nothing but 0 0.35 R. So if you want to write the average speed, speed is distance over time. So that is distance over time. So now distance is in kilometers. That is 38.5 kilometers. It's always right to write, good to write the unit over 0 0.35 r. Okay, so again I need a calculator. So that is 38.5 divided by 0 0.35, which is 110 kilometers per hour. So this is 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, the next question. To make a tunnel, to make the tunnel, a cylindrical hole which is 38.5 kilometer long is drilled. The radius of the cylindrical hole is 44.19 meters. And you want to work out the volume in meter cube. So here you need to change this kilometers to meters. So you should know the relation between kilometers and meters. You should be knowing one kilometer is 1000 meters. So 38.5 kilometers would be 38.5 times 1,000 meters, okay? So that is 38500 meters. So always good to check on a calculator. So 38.5 times 1,000 that is 38,500 meters. Okay, so now uh, I'll draw a cylinder. So suppose this is a cylindrical tunnel. Okay, so this is a cylindrical tunnel. So this is the radius and this is the height. Okay, now volume of a cylinder is, of course, this is area of a circle times the height. So this is your height and this is your radius. So that is pi r squared times h. That's the formula of volume. So the radius is given 4.19 meters. So this is your height. And your radius is 4.19 meters. So again, we'll need a calculator. So volume is pi times 4.19 squared times 38,500 and this would be in meter cube. Okay, so this is shift pi times 4.19 squared times 38,500. And you want the answer in three significant figures. So this is 
2123433. Okay, so you want to in three significant figures. So I hope I'll remember this. 2123433. Okay, two one two three four three three. Two one two three four three three meter cube. Now if you want to write in three significant figures, you have to have only three numbers, three significant numbers here. So you look at this number. Okay, so now these all numbers will become only placeholders. Now if this number was five this would go up by 1. So here, if you want to write in three significant figures, it's 2, 1, 2, and these will become zeros. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me put the commas here. So this is 2,120,000 meter cube. See you in the next video. A sphere of plasticine of radius 8 centimeters is reduced to a cube. So now this is a sphere. This is a, a plasticine sphere of radius 8 centimeters. Now what you do is, from this you're going to make a, a sphere. Sorry, from, a, uh, from the sphere you're going to make a cube. Okay, a cube. And you want to find the what's the length of this cube to the nearest millimeter we want to find what's this side length in nearest millimeter so one thing that you have to understand for this type of question is the volume of the sphere the volume of sphere is equal to the volume of cube that's the basic idea the volume of sphere is equal because it's the same quantity the same volume that made the sphere is making the cube. So you can say the volume of sphere is equal to the volume of cube. Okay, so hopefully you know the volume, the formula for volume of cube and sphere. So volume of uh, sphere is 4 times 4 times pi times radius cube divided by 3. And the volume of is uh, oh, sorry volume of cube I should have written here not sphere volume of cube volume of uh, sphere is equal to the volume of cube and the length the length is so let's call this say x or let's call this l so the volume of a cube would be l cube so l times l times l the volume of a sphere is equal to the volume of cube. So I've just written the formula. So now we can apply, substitute the value. So you can say 4 times pi times 8 cube divided by 3 is equal to L cube. Okay, so this is, let's uh, use the calculator to find this. So this is 4 times shift pi times 8 cube divided by 3 which is equal to 2144.66 so let me write that 2144.66 centimeter cube is equal to L cube now if you want to find L from L cube what would you do? So let me write this again. So L cube is 2144.66. Now to undo this cube, you have to take the cube root. So you have to take the cube root of this side. So you have to take the cube root of this number. So cube and cube root and cube cancel each other out. So what is remaining is L is cube root of this. So how do you find this? So you can go like this. So press shift and that is in some calculators you directly have the cube root key. So you now before that you press 3 shift cube root. So this means cube root of whatever number. So it is 2144.66 point 
I hope I can't see the point here. This is 0 0.66 equal 12.89. Okay, so this is about 12.89. So you can't have, you can't round it up. So I'll say, because this cannot be rounded up, you have to round down. So I'll say the maximum that you can make is of 12 centimeters. So this is 12. So yeah, yeah, you can, so you can change this into millimeters. So let me write 12.89 centimeters, which is in 2 dp. This is centimeters in 2 dp. And so if you want to change this into millimeter, it's 128 uh, millimeters. I can say this is 128 or one, 129. I would say 128 millimeter can be the length of the cube. You should be knowing these basic conversions. So let me write 1 meter is 100 centimeter. So from this, if you want to, if it's a good idea to draw this bubble, so this is meter and this is centimeter. So if you want to change from meters to centimeters, if you want to change from meters to centimeter, you times it by 100. And if you want to change from centimeters to meters, you divide by 100. I remember like this, meter to centimeter, the number that you're going to get is going to get bigger because you know one meter is 100 centimeter. So the number is bigger by how many times? 100 times. So from meters to centimeter, you have to multiply by 100. But if you go the other way around, me meter has a, sm a smaller number. So this is, if you think about a number, this is a bigger unit, but a smaller number. So this one is 100th one of a centimeter. You can say one meter is 100th one of a centimeter. So this is how you convert. Okay. Now, one meter is also how many millimeters? Okay, so now before that, let me write centimeter first. One centimeter is 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. Now, from this, you can make up this. So, from centimeter, if you want to change into millimeters, the same logic. This has got a, this is 10 times, the number is 10 times bigger than this. So it times this by 10. And if you want to change from millimeters to centimeter, you divide by 10. Divide by 10. Okay, the next is, let me write all, both of them together. So you can say 1 meter is 100 centimeter. Okay, and 100 centimeter is how many millimeters? You know 1 centimeter is 10 millimeter. So 100 centimeter would be 1,000 millimeter. Now from this, if you want to make up this bubble, so it's from meter, you want to change it to centimeter, you want to change into millimeter. So well, you know from meter to centimeter, you times it by? 100 and from centimeter to millimeter you times it by 10 and if you go the other way around this is divided by 100 and this will be divided by 10 okay hopefully I'm not confusing you but if you want to do one big jump from meter to millimeter so let me use a different color if you want to jump from meter to, convert from meter to millimeter. So this is a jump of 100 and then a jump of 10. So that is here to times it by 1000. And that's what you can see, 1 meter is 1000 millimeters. So if you want to change from, this is millimeter, sorry, I should write mm. mm millimeter and if you want to go backwards from millimeter to meters, you have to divide by 1000. Okay, and finally, 
uh, what do you do? What do you know? You know that one kilometer, one kilometer is thousand meters. So from kilometers, if you want to change into meters, what should you do? From kilometers to meters, you times it by thousand, and from meters to kilometers, you divide by thousand. So let us take some example to illustrate what I mean. So let's look at first the first example. If you want to change 190 centimeters to say meters, how many meters here? So I look at the I it's always good to draw again if you're struggling. So we know meter to centimeter. One meter is 100 centimeters. So this way, you have to times it by 100. And from centimeter to meter, you have to divide by 100. So to answer this, this is 190 divided by 100. Okay, which is, I know is 1.9, but if you're struggling, you can use your calculator. So when you run, 190 divided by 100 equals 1.9 meters. This is 1.9 meters. Okay, so let me take one more example. You want to change, say, 3,456 millimeter into meters. Suppose if this is the question. Okay. This is millimeters to meters. So you should know the conversion. So if you don't, it's always good to uh, write. So you know, you should know one meter is 1000 millimeter. Milli stands for one thousandth. So one millimeter. So this implies, what, what is millimeter? One millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. This is what milli stands for. Milli stands for one thousandth. So you know, so you know, so using this, you can make up this. So you know this is meter and this is millimeter. One meter is thousand millimeter. So you have to times this by thousand. So if you want to go from millimeters to meters, you have to divide by thousand. So that's the question. You want to change from millimeters to meters. So use the calculator, 3,456 divided by 1,000, which is 3.456. The answer is 3.456 of a meter. Okay, so now if you want to change uh, say 905 905 meters to kilometers. So always good practice to write the conversion. You know one kilometer is 1000 meter. So make up a column, so always good to draw pictures, so that pictures make sense. Okay, if one picture is equal, equivalent to 1,000 words. So this is kilometers to meters, so you have to times this by 1,000. So if you want to go the other way around, so from meter to kilometer, you have to divide by 1,000. So once you keep drawing a few of these pictures, you don't even need to draw this, so you know how to, whether you have to multiply or divide, and that's the main problem. What do you do? Are you going to divide or multiply? If I give you formulas, you're never going to remember. So always draw, write this uh, conversion, and draw this diagram and decide. So this will be 905 divided by 1000, which is 0.905. Point or 0 0.905 kilometers. Let me finish off with 
the last question. Okay, if you have a, a bus, suppose you want to change zero point uh, zero zero nine five zero zero nine five kilometers two meters two meters. So we just saw kilometer kilometers to meters. So we know from kilometers to meters, one kilometer is thousand meters. So that's what we want. From kilometers, we want to change into meters. So we times it by thousand. Zero point zero zero nine five times one thousand. This is nine point five meters. Nine point five meters.